All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School. Hey, welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. We're going to have a blast tonight with our guest. It's good to see our board member, Brother David Jacobs, popping in here this evening. And uh, I know that a whole lot of others will be joining us as we get going here. Uh, there's people watching tonight that aren't even, uh, that haven't even uh, entered the chat room, and that's fine. Uh, just keep watching. We're glad for you. Uh, we appreciate all of our friends from all over the world that watch these shows. And I'll have to admit, I always wanted my, my revelation teaching to be the most popular, but this is by far the longest running and the most popular show that I do. I appreciate all of you so much. Well, tonight, my guest is Dr. Roy Richmond, who is a scribe, theologian, teacher, author, and president of Tree of Life Ministries International Incorporated. He began ministry in 1988 and has pastor, pastored several fellowships. He resides in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, which is not excessively a long ways from where I'm at, with his wife Donna of 48 years as of 2018. Uh, he he uh, ministers around the world by way of the World Wide Web and live on Facebook every Sunday morning. He travels abroad and across the United States ministering the truthful word of man's eternal oneness with the Father with a clear sounding word. Father equipped Roy as a scribe to the nations. The mission, mandate, and ministry of Roy's life is to teach and explain concerning the grace of our Father, which is founded in the truthful gospel revealed by Jesus Christ. The truth, the truth of Jesus' passion was clearly revealed by the Apostle Paul, or to the Apostle Paul, and then John and many others after them. However, what Paul and John was given needs enlargement, except for removing uh, what religious-minded translators have done uh, to what they wrote. And man, I, I like that. Dr. Roy mines out the gold, the divine nature, and the silver, the redemption, and makes the word understandable for the students and those who are hungry. The mandate on and anointing on Roy's life is to eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Nehemiah 810, where it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Dr. Roy also serves as a professor and academic dean at Global Grace Seminary in Houston, Texas. He has written 68 books that teach and explain the word of God. Additionally, Dr. Roy has translated half of the book of Revelation, the epistle of Romans, the epistle of Galatians, the epistle of Colossians, and hundreds of chapters in various books of the Bible and several thousand sections of verses. And I know that to be true because every time you see something on Facebook that says Tree of Life Ministry, Dr. Roy Richmond, Tree of Life Ministry, uh, that is his uh, interpretation or translation of that verse. Hey, Dr. Roy Richmond, welcome to Kingdom Dynamics, my brother. How are you? I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. You know what? <laughs> yeah, you, you've done a lot. You've been around the block. and uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm how I am as I'm very excited to be here tonight. Yes, and very I'm very much. excited for you to be here. We're going to have fun. Um, before we get into our topic tonight, if you'd like to share with the folks kind of what's going on a little bit in life and ministry, as little or as much as you'd like to share, uh, I want to open that to you. Well, um, you know, I've had a lot of different things over my years in ministry. I have done a lot of traveling and everything and teaching, but uh, the biggest thing that's going on right now, I, I think the Lord has just really has got me on a pathway of learning and teaching uh, how to live out of who we are and learn who we are. And that's yes. why I've been writing these three books that I've written. I, I, I was thinking today, it's kind of a trilogy, uh, you know, living as Holy Spirit, the unforced rhythms of life. And, and now uh, living uh, what I call it, uh, life viewed from the single eye. And uh, yes. it's very, very important that we start changing, uh, not no, not so much our view, but just seeing with our spirit eye. And when you see with your spirit eye, it'll rec it'll correct your view, if you would. Uh, as I was telling yeah. you earlier, I had to have cataract surgery uh, in May and June, and they right. had to remove, re remove something. And what it was, there was a cloud in my eyes that 
uh, that hindered my view. And when they took those out and put corrected lens in, I'm seeing everything beautiful now. Color is more brighter than I've ever seen before. The trees, when we drove through uh, Arizona and back home, and clouds. Donna said, how many times are you going to say that's beautiful? You know, but I'm seeing, <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing very clear now. And so to me, that's a real picture that that's the mandate that Father has me on right now is to help people remove the clouds so we can see the truth. Yes, yes. And, you know, on the flip side of that, you know, the disciples, when Jesus uh, left them in Acts chapter one, they couldn't see him because of the cloud, the glory cloud. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, last time you were on, you had glasses. And uh, now and that's now I don't. directed. <laughs> yeah. You remember, now you see you, it. you remember the young man? You remember the young man that Jesus prayed for that couldn't see and he went a little yeah. too far in his healing. He opened his spiritual eyes and he saw men as trees, you know, and yeah. so Jesus had to lay hands on him and bring him back to his natural cause. It was a little too early for that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of pictures for that. That's a great uh, uh, in interpretation of I've never heard anybody say it that way before. But uh, so tonight we're going to talk about uh, life from the single eye or any variation of that, uh, because I know that you're currently doing a teaching series on Sunday mornings called The Wisdom of the Single Eye and um, working on a new book. And uh, that's you know, we talked about uh, uh, the unforced rhythms of life last time you were on. And I realized that in these uh, one hour, uh, hour and 15 minute segments that it's hard to really grab hold of everything uh, that's going on in you concerning the revelation Father is uh, showing you. Uh, but tonight, I want us to, if we can, just grab as much of this as we can, uh, starting with Proverbs 20, verse 12. And I kind of used this uh, in the first advertisement that I did for this show. Uh, I think it was Tuesday evening. Uh, it says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made them both. But I went on to look at this. And, of course, I really love the Passion Translation. It says, lovers of God have been given eyes to see with spiritual discernment and uh, ears to hear from God. Uh, the message Bible says ears that hear and eyes that see. We got our basic equipment from God. And one of the things that I've been teaching on a whole lot is uh, our origin from before the foundation of the world, looking at looking at, at Genesis 1, 1, and then trying to see beyond that or before that, uh, because we know that the Bible is has a lot of symbolic truth in it, which there are clues that lead us to all this truth. And so to be single-minded, uh, I, I think that would kind of be uh, seeing things from God's perspective and, and to realize that what Father sees is all there is and coming into that same harmony, that same perspective. But uh, what about this tonight? Uh, seeing from uh, really another realm, seeing what, what do you mean by uh, having a single eye? Well, most of our life, we were try we were taught to see, uh, try to, to see the way God sees things, or see the way Jesus yeah. sees things. We we used to hear that thing, uh, what would Jesus do? And then we mm -hmm. would try try to find out what Jesus would do. Then we would try to do that, and all of that implied that that wasn't our nature, it wasn't our character, and so we still saw ourselves as separate. Because if I'm trying to be like God, then I'm denying that I am God. And if I'm yeah. trying to see like God, then I'm denying that I have a single eye or that I have spirit or I am Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So my emphasis is on this. And like you and I discussed before, as I'm learning as I go, I'm learning as I teach right along with everybody else. Uh, but I, I want to realize that I, like I've said already, I am Holy Spirit and my true eye is the spirit is the spirit eye. I don't need to go read. I do read the Bible and I do know what God says. And I knew that I know that God, as Kay has said many times, God sees us from the end as in the beginning. He sees us the way he created us. So I'm not trying to see like God. I, I am I am believing that my true sight is God's sight. And so when I yes. see I see as God in the earth and I see everything beautiful, uh, the Bible says that they will know us by our love. And so when I truly love somebody, I see them as beautiful. I don't I don't look with the seeing of the eye or the hearing of the ear, but I look with it like, as you said, the, the ear and the eye that God created. So when God created man, 
he, yes, he gave them physical eyes, but everything they saw, those eyes were controlled by the by spirit, by Holy Spirit. Everything they heard, their ears were controlled by Holy Spirit. So I believe that Father is bringing us to this place where we we are doing that now. That our senses, our five senses, are are not used for carnal things, but they're literally being controlled by Holy Spirit. If I hug you, I hug you with my Holy Spirit. If I greet yeah. you with a holy kiss, it's by by my Holy Spirit. It's not a sensual thing. And uh, yeah. so, you know, I, I'm learning myself and I practice it every day. When I look at something or I look at some person, I'm practicing paying attention what I see, what my brain says I see. And if it's not truth, then I cast that down as a vain imagination and I say it's beautiful. And, you know, yes, it may be difficult because we walk down the street and we see people on the street that's smoking drugs or doing things we call sin and they don't look very nice. And it is hard to look at them and see them as beautiful. But when we practice and see, it's something we have to practice doing. We have to oh, yeah. practice daily saying, I'm going to see with my spirit eye. I'm going to train my eyes to see the beauty in everything that I see. Yeah. And, and you know, when we talk about, and, and we talked about this last time you were on, but when we talk about my Holy Spirit, you're, you're speaking, uh, I, I think what you're saying is that you as a spirit being in Holy Spirit are one and the same person. Yes, we are Holy Spirit. As I as I said last time, Father yeah. God is spirit. You know, we, we used to think that Father was sitting on the throne out there and the same day we're going to see a physical God somewhere, just like people are yearning to see Jesus again sometime. And But literally, God is spirit. And if God is spirit and God is holy and he created man and he made man in resemblance, which is yeah. more than resemblance, he made us in the perfect image of God then we are spirit and we never lost it, yes. never. So that's why yes. I, so I believe we need to quit saying the Holy Spirit because we imply that Holy Spirit is separate from us. And I'm very excited hearing more and more people out there saying my Holy Spirit. And, you know, I'm sure you're yeah. hearing a lot of people saying my Holy Spirit or our Holy Spirit. And it's not disdaining God. It's not blasphemy, you know. Uh, my DNA is of my mom and dad. So I can say I'm of my mother and I'm of my dad. Now I'm not yeah. Sam Richmond, but I'm of him. And, and father manifests himself as spirit. And like I, I, uh, a lot of people out there know that I'm, I've got some sickness in my body and uh, a lot of the doctors are wanting me to go to a psychiatrist. And so I went, a psychologist. So I went to one today and he wanted to know who I was apart from what I do. And I said, do you really want to hear it? And he said, yes. And I said, I am son of God. I am Holy Spirit. I thought he was going to fall out of his chair. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but, but, I, but I explained it to him and then he understood. But if we don't know who we are and we still see ourselves as separate, then we're going to see everybody else as separate too. And so I'm not trying to tell people you need to become like God. I'm saying you are God. You are God in a body. And you have God's spirit and you have God's vision and you see the way yeah. God sees. Yes. You know, John uh, made a statement uh, in uh, chapter one, verse four, when he said in him was life and the life was the light of men. Uh, I think what he's probably saying is in him was life. And that that same life of who he is, uh, is what caused life to be in man back before the foundation of the world. And I, I usually use this example this way and, and I have to explain it because I don't mean it quite this way, but you know, God, if we're the reflection of God, he made us that way, then God looks at the reflection that in the mirror and he sees himself. The intention is for you to look back and to see him. And it's really this position. It's not this position. So there is no separation from God. Uh, and, and that's the thing that I have, had to realize is that I am one with Holy Spirit and as Holy Spirit, and there is no separation between me and Holy Spirit. And if the medical profession that you have seen quite a bit lately, I've seen quite a bit, uh, if they could take somehow figure out how to take an x-ray of you on the inside, that they would really see an x-ray of Holy Spirit, one and the same, no separation. Uh, so right. when we talk about the single eye, um, it seems to really mean uh, that that we're embracing the fact that it's one mind. 
it's it's not God as in, as you've already said, you know, we're not talking about a God somewhere out far off in the universe. We're talking about uh, Father God who lives in you. He's a part of your DNA. He's a part of your structure. He's not divided. You're not divided from him no more than you are divided from your fellow man, even if that's a person's view. We're all one because we all are a part of who God is. And uh, I love that because it really does help me to stop looking at people wrongly or as any less than who God made them to be. And so you and I know that we could talk about a lot of things that are going on right now in our world. And the thing that should keep us on track is that is the understanding that they have the same God in them or as a part of who they are that you and I do. And so we're of that one mind. We're single minded. We have a single minded perspective, even if sometimes our awareness hasn't got it yet. Right. Right. And so when you when you know the truth, you know, Paul said, if it's anything worth thinking on, think on these things. Yeah, and yeah. then the scripture talks about casting down vain imaginations. Well, first of all, we have to know what the vain imaginations are, you know. And so we, when we know what the vain imaginations are and we have discovered the truth, then Jesus said the undeceitful word will make you free. And so, again, it has to be something that we're willing to practice every day of our life. And, and my question is to people, is do you really want change? Because if you yeah. don't want to change, if you're comfortable with who you are, then no matter how much truth is brought to you, you won't accept it. You know, and it's like I told that psychologist today. I told him, I said, what what you do is not who you are. And, and this is really hard for people. But if you have murdered somebody, you're not a murderer. It's something you did. If you're a right. if you're if you're a, if you practice homosexuality or or you have affairs or whatever it is, that's not who you are. Who you are is son yeah. of God. Who you are is you righteous and you're holy. And so right. what I say when I see these things and I and I judge them by the scene of the physical eye, you know, I, I'm, I'm now I'm beginning to say, wait a minute. That's not who that person is. They're not a street person. They're not a bum. You know, they're not a sinner. And all the things that we've been told to label people, they're righteous and holy. So these things that we've been seeing, they're literally anti-Holy Spirit. Because those yeah. people are just as Holy Spirit as I am. We are 100% God in a body. And just like Jesus, whether it's an earth walk, we're the same thing. You know, people have wanted to exalt Jesus above us. But literally, Jesus, I, I do believe he was the Messiah. I believe he was sent for the appointed time. I believe he entered into the judgment that the world had for him. I believe he drew into himself the confusion of man and died with that and no longer was a power. But he was still a man. And he was a man that was fully aware of who he was. And that's where yeah. the Holy Spirit is bringing us today. Our Father Father is waking us up to who we are. And it's, it's so exciting. You're seeing it. There's masses of people all over the world who are waking up. And what we've got to do is get ourselves together and stop saying, well, I have this truth and you have this truth. And all come together at one truth. And that's when we're all going to speak as the voice of one and when the voice of one is speaking through every person, I'm telling you, it won't take long to change this whole entire earth. I believe that. I really no. believe that. Um, and, and you know, when we talk about uh, Jesus, you know, Jesus never did say, when we talk about the symbolism of, of the, the book of Revelation, we talk about uh, that we, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, or it should be heavenly Christ. It, it's not like he's seated one place, we're seated another place. We were invited to sit in the exact same position. So when the scriptures say that Jesus was the express image of God, we are also the express image of God. We're God in the flesh as Jesus was in the flesh. But what we have to do, and I know there was a day that you and I'd be crucified for even talking about this, but what we have to realize is that you, when you say, you know, I'm God in the flesh, I can't, I can't separate myself, say here I am in the flesh and, you know, God's still God up in wherever. It's one in the same. We're all one in the same. We, we, and so this is where this single eye comes in, I think, where we're actually starting to think because the single eye really doesn't mean to see with a natural eye. 
now that you've had cataract surgery, eye right, glasses, it's to be single-minded, to think like he thinks. And if you're going to think like he is, like he does, you're going to have to start seeing yourself like he sees you or like he made you to be, which is identical to himself. Right. You've got to, you've got to see from here, <laughs> you know, and I'm not yep. talking about so much the brain, but the very spirit of God that's inside yeah. of you, the spirit of God that controls your, your brain, if you would, and your thoughts and your awareness and your subconsciousness. There's things that, that have to be removed, though. Like I said, for me to see clearly, those cataracts had to be removed. And that yes. old wor worn out lens that was in my eye had to be removed and a brand new lens. It was called symphony. Uh, I don't know why they called it symphony, but it's a powerful lens and it actually focuses on what you're looking at. But I'm just telling you the color. When I look at color, I've never seen color so pretty now. And I just say, I say, man, when you start seeing by the spirit of God and see father as I've said many times, Father sent many prophets and messengers and, and, yes. and the angel of the Lord, which was messengers, to reveal these things. Man wouldn't listen. And so I believe a lot of the Psalms talked about Jesus being sent to show us the way, the truth, and the life. And there's a Psalm that I, I used in the book. You may have read it already, but it's Psalm 1611 in the King James Version. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so I translated that, and that's called the Tree of Life Bible, Roy E. Richmond Tree of Life Bible. But I translated it, and it says, You will show me the well-traveled path of spirit living, which brings yes. fullness of joy and satisfaction with blissomeness, gladness, and hilarity and union with you forever. And so how did he do that? Jesus did that. He spent 33 and a half years on this earth showing us the, the spirit life and the way to live out of the spirit and the way to respond to people and the way, way to see things properly. And I just believe people are tapping into the light of revelation and many people are beginning to walk in that in their everyday life. And so we've got to press on to follow this light and the yes. spirit of God is our light and it will lead, it will guide our path if we let it. I now, use the you know word there's it, a, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, there's a Tree of Life version, uh, BibleGateway.com. Yes. So I'm looking for the day when I see the Tree of Life Bible by Roy E. Richmond right. on BibleGateway.com. Well, yeah. well, that's why I put, I make it R.E. Richmond Tree of Life Bible. So people will know it's different than the Hebrew one, but I'm sure yeah. it's fine, but that's what it is. I, I'm going to publish it pretty quick because I, I don't believe that in my lifetime, uh, unless I just believe without a shadow of doubt that my body's already redeemed and I know it mm -hmm. is, but I'm going to go ahead and publish what I've got done already pretty soon. Len Garner's helping me with it and I've got to get it edited, but I, hopefully by the end of this year, I'll have it published in a book. So. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, in line with what we're talking about tonight, you're, you're noticing on your laptop, uh, Dr. K Fairchild said, if we realize we, we are not what we do, then ultimately we'll do who or what we uh, are. Yes. Um, I, I think that's so awesome because uh, even in physical medical situations, that's not who I am. In lifestyles, that's not who I am. Right. Who I am is what Father God has already planted in me, which is himself. And that's the revelation I'm getting. I think that when John... Uh, received revelation as well as Paul. I mean, what an what an awesome uh, 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 person the Apostle Paul's life was. I I think that as this revelation come, everything was about Father God showing them in all their tumultuous situations and all the troubles they had that that was not what defined them. He is who who and what defined them, and they brought us. And and as you said in your bio. Uh, you know, and I believe this, that even the Apostle Paul didn't have all revelation that was supposed to be gained from what he was given. And so here today, people like yourself are still translating or getting revelation out of the Apostle Paul's writings and his experiences, because you and I both know it's not just that which is written on the pages of black and white, but there's also the interlinear of scripture, that which is written in between the lines, the revelation, the gold that you dig out the, the, and all of that. 
so yes, I, I think that we really have to teach people to embrace that. Even if I don't agree with your lifestyle, what you're doing is not what defines you. You were created a son of God, a daughter of God, a child of God. You are the express image of the Father. And isn't this amazing, Dr. Roy, uh, when, when uh, the scriptures write this about Jesus and says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. My, my question my question's always been twofold. What mind was in Christ, the, the, the earth man Christ, which was the mind of the Father? And why do we got a problem with considering ourselves to be the exact same as God? Well, it's because we've been taught, even with Jesus, you know, uh, people have exalted Jesus so high that we have all those songs where we want to be more like Jesus, you know, and, yeah. and all those things we sing. So literally, Jesus has been made a idol for people. And just like God has been made so high that we can't touch God. And, and before we get away from this, I just want to I want to say this. I, I, I believe the Apostle Paul was given a pure revelation of what Jesus came to reveal. And I believe he had it all. I believe he understood 100 percent. He knew he had to leave because if he didn't leave, people would come and worship him. Just like Jesus knew he had to leave. Because if he didn't, they would come to Jesus for everything, for healing, for miracles and everything. What we read in the book of Romans and Corinthians and Ephesians and all of his epistles has been so grossly mistranslated that exactly. it makes it look like he didn't understand. Just like the first seven, eight chapters of, of, of Romans, people think he's talking about the condition of man. And he wasn't. He was just talking about how man lived, how they lived out a mistaken identity. But he was explaining to us what Jesus came to reveal. But it was so mistranslated that you would think that people that Paul didn't receive a full revelation. But he did. Him and John both were given the pure revelation of, of what Jesus came to reveal to us. And the translator just missed it up really bad. So I always say we don't need a new revelation. We don't need a greater revelation. We need the revelation that was revealed to Paul and John. But again, it's it's hard for people to say we're equal with God because they think it's blasphemy and they haven't read their scripture. They they go by what their religious people have that leaders have taught them. But the Bible, right. as we pointed out last time, God said, "Ye are gods. And yeah. as I read, I, I read to you, I think this translation in Genesis uh, 1, uh, 26 and 27, it literally says, saith God become man as a representative figure. And that representative figure is more than just representing, but it's it's equal. It's it's the very same as God is. He we are. And it says in resemblance. And then it says dominion over. And that word dominion means master. And so he right. goes over all the things, the fish, the sea, everything. And he says, be the master of this earth. And people yeah. freak out because they want to pray to God to do everything, you know. Right. And they see they see the earth as polluted. They see the earth as perishing and going. You know they're they're still seeing them with their 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 physical eyes. But in verse twenty seven it says, "So crea created God man as a representative figure and resemblance. God created Himself male and female to create Himself everlasting." When you looked up up in the Hebrew, that's what it said. God created Himself male and female to create Himself everlasting. So every time a child is born or, or, or a woman gives birth to a child, that child is God birth to that, to that mom and dad. And it has different personalities, different characters, different talents, but it's God. Yes. And, and we were taught that way. And that's what I meant by what I said. It's not so much that uh, Paul didn't have it, but it's what we read in, in our modern translations, because uh, I, those are two characters in the Bible I really uh, love is Paul and John. And, um, but there has been a lot of mistranslation. Uh, you know, I was studying, uh, teaching one of my classes in, at World Bible School University. And um, I was looking at Psalm 8, where David says, who is man that you are mindful of him? And as the story goes on, he, he, I'm not saying it all in exact order, but he said, you crowned him with glory and honor. And you made him a little lower than the angels, which we've always said that's translated that you made him a little lower than Elohim. But I was reading that. I was doing really stretching that out. And it actually says this in the, in the Hebrew that you created him as gods. Right. Exactly. I've seen that. 
And so we were taught, you know, I would have never uh, said some of the things that I'm saying today back uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, and especially not 50 years ago, or even in, in coming up in church as a child, because, uh, man, we'd have been flogged for that stuff, thinking that we're like God or we're as God or saying any of those things or that I'm like Jesus. Because as you said, that was a famous song, as you well know, to be like no. Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. If I could ever just get that one thing down in my life and that's be like Jesus. And the truth is we didn't know that we already were because he is the same as his father. And that's, that's who we were. We just didn't know. Yeah. You, you know, when we sing those, we still have tears come in our eyes, you know, know. because we sing, it's just like, I, I think I've told you before, one of my songs that I hum all the time and, and whisper all the time and, is is uh, draw me near Lord near <laughs> and I just think why am I singing that but you know what I yeah. just kind of change it a little bit nearer to know who you are and know who I am and but but those yeah. are the songs that we sang and they really hindered us and the Apostle Paul yeah. I know he he constantly wanted a release to be able to teach what was inside of him and again that's why he prayed for the Father to free him from his religious uh, belief system he. You know, he went to Mars Hill and he tried to teach with intellect and he never saw one convert. And that's why he ended up coming to Corinth and he just began to teach about Jesus. And but he prayed and asked God and God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And that word grace there is Holy Spirit. He said, draw from your spirit and that will swallow up all that stuff. And that's why yeah. I just really am passionate about living out of our Holy Spirit, knowing that we're Holy Spirit. And every day, every moment by faith. So I make a withdrawal in my spirit and I don't have to worry about what's up there. That's not right. It'll just swallow it up. I don't have to have it cast out of me. I don't have to have it uh, exactly. bound out of me. I don't have to fast for it. I just eat the truth and feed the truth and fellowship with who I am. Yeah. And that's what rids it from you. That's, that's why I teach things like when Jesus uh, cast out spirits with a word, the word spirit there, uh, he didn't cast Holy Spirit out, which we know that's pneuma, but really that can be translated mindsets. So it was an attempt yes. at persuading a Jewish nation who were steeped in the old covenant to see something greater than they've ever seen. And right. uh, that that leads me to this. You know, uh, lately I've even changed something else. We always say if we're going to say Holy Spirit when we read our King James or New King James, Holy Spirit is capitalized. That's a capital S, okay? But when you're reading about the spirit of man, okay, that's a lowercase s. And we preface that really heavily. That was also a part of our upbringing. But he, I want to throw this at you. Um, uh, and I'm going to read it from a different translation than planned. But Matthew 6, verse 22 through 23, uh, the Passion Translation says, The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. If your heart is uh, unclouded, you mentioned that earlier, in the light, uh, in the light floods in. Uh, if your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. But if your eyes are focused on money, you're talking about greed uh, or, or that the, the King James or New King James uh, talks about darkness. It says the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. How profound will the darkness within you uh, will be the darkness within you if the light of truth cannot enter. So, you know, here again, uh, when we're talking about the eyes of your spirit, we, we're still talking about the eyes of your mind. Uh, eyes refer to what you can see. Uh, knowing talks about what you, what's revealed to you. So we really do have to, uh, isn't there, let me say it this way, isn't there a part of us that we really have to say, I've got to take a step back and quit fighting this, and I've got to allow this light of revelation to penetrate yes. every trace of darkness that exists in my thinking. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, the word spirit, you have to look it up. And in some mm -hmm. places when you see spirit, it's talking about more about your conscious awareness instead of Holy Spirit. But then there are right. other places it's talking about Holy Spirit. And so, you know, you've got to discern which one it's talking about, but you know, uh, I forget whether I've told you this or not, but years ago, uh, before I even met Brother uh, Gary Garner, the, yes. back when I was steeped heavily, heavily 
and sin consciousness and everything else. Uh, I had something I was struggled with, and I never tell people what it was, so I just say it's ice cream. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I uh, I was I was up preaching one Sunday at the church that I was associate pastor in, and so I'm preaching this one subject, and the Lord's over here talking to me. You ever have that happen? And, oh, yeah. and I heard I heard the Lord speak to me that the more you resist that ice cream, the more you make it a, a devil to you. And even before I even understand what Kay has shared about uh, powers and making things a power, literally, uh, the Lord didn't use the word power, but I'm, I, I give that enemy a power. And the Lord just spoke to me and say, just quit fighting it. And that really got my attention. And yet I was preaching, but I was hearing that, but it was for me. And, <laughs> and it just brought me down a pathway where, right, we have to quit fighting this stuff. Like I said a minute ago, I don't have to like like this psychologist. He's wanting to go into my past and find out about my mom and my dad and things that possibly are making me hurt. And I want to say I'm hurting because I have damaged joints, you know, but he wants to go <laughs> into my past and dig that out. And I told him I am not going to let you do that. That's not who I am. And I'm not going to fight that. But that's what we've got yeah. to do. We've got to step back a minute and say, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's not who I am. It's something that was done to me or that I did, but it, it has nothing to do with who I am today. And quit beating ourselves up and just feed on the truth. Right. It's like it's like if a doctor comes to you, you present yourself with a symptom, and he says, if you'll take these pills three times a day for one month, that will be gone. And you don't do it. And then you go back and gripe at him. And I yeah. say that the goss mm. pill is the best pill that we can take. <laughs> And if we will just do what we were taught and do what the, uh, Paul taught us and what Jesus did is just feed on heavenly manna every day, all that stuff will go away. But we we yeah. we condemn ourselves and we also continue to set in places that do that to us. And I believe yeah. with all my heart, there are, is going to be a day that people's going to start coming out of that. We've got to stop yeah. supporting the lie. And there's still, so many people still sitting in fellowships that are beating them down and beating them down because they're used to that. And it's that dung that's destroying them. But more my, than any, my wife, go ahead. my wife go and ahead. I and our, our board member have visited a lot of churches here in Joplin. Uh, we've hardly visited the same church twice and we just can't find that comfortable, you know, the, the message that really speaks to us. And so I understand that. And, and to a degree, those things support uh, what you said, the enemy, that they, they support the enemy that's in our own thinking. Um, I remember I used to watch, listen to Gary Garner. Uh, he would come to the church where I was an associate pastor at years ago and so fascinated by his teaching style. And you know, nobody else was teaching just like him and, and the hours he would spend in prayer and all of the things was such a, a fascination, uh, fascination to a young preacher. But, you know, you said something that reminded me of a story that I'll be very brief. Uh, 2008, I was in the hospital. I was paralyzed from the waist down because of inflammation after surgery, my lower back. And um, uh, so I needed acute rehab to be able to learn how to function at home because they couldn't <laughs> figure out what was going on. So, <laughs> so that they sent a psychiatrist to my room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and and uh, so I'm supposed to be down and depressed, but my bro my youngest, my baby, one of my youngest brothers had just hung himself and committed suicide. I helped uh, do his funeral in California. Uh, my wife's uh, mother, I think, had passed away. Her brother had passed away, something like that. And I was telling this psychiatrist about Jesus, <laughs> which didn't really fly. But can you imagine? I didn't qualify for, for acute rehab. Yeah. And I would sit home paralyzed. But yeah, uh, we've got to change the way we think and start seeing things exactly like our father thinks, because the mind that was in Christ was the father. And the same mind that's in us is the exact the, 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 the exact uh, uh, thought patterns, the, the brain waves, if you will. Uh, that's in our father. We just got to learn to think like him. And sometimes you got to shove some stuff aside to be able to do that. Right. Well, there's a key that in the scripture we see a lot of times where Paul used the word let and we have to let it. It's already there. 
but we have to exactly. let it be part of our lives. Uh, uh, as Kay said in Living Out of Our Spiritual Resources, and, mm-hmm. and I've taught mm-hmm. it several times, we have all things that pertain to life and godliness. We have a spirit eye. We have a yes, spirit sir. ear. We can see the way God says we can hear, but we have to let it be the dominant part of our life. And there ends the problem because most people are so comfortable where they're at and are used to it. And as Dr. Phil, you know who Dr. Phil is? That oh, yeah. TV, <laughs> he says, evidently, evidently, you're getting something out of it or you wouldn't keep doing it. And that's what yeah. I want to say. I think we've got things out of stuff. We, we've, we've enjoyed feeling rotten i think sometimes we it confirms the fact that we're not like god and it confirms the fact that we're just dirty rotten sinners but thank god he saved me and you know we identify with been a sinner saved by grace and you know i just have to say how's that working for you you know in ephesians yeah. 118 and 119 and this is my translation i like it a lot is that it says therefore release the rays in other words they're there the light's there but we've got to release it we got to let it get out brighten up, make manifest your vision of the understanding of who you are and how vast your eternal possession is and always has been in you and in all people, world without beginning or ending. And in verse 19, moreover, from an eternal understanding, I desire you to know the exceeding greatness of his power to us words to experience Holy Spirit by us who believe. You have, it's yes. not believe in Jesus. It's not believe. It's believe that you're Holy Spirit. And now I want yes. people to come down and walk the aisle and say, I believe I'm Holy Spirit. And that's yeah. one thing that we've did in our church in the past. People used to get mad at me because I stopped asking people to come down and get saved because I didn't believe they had to. But many times people would come down. But what we did when they came down is we instructed them who they already are and brought freedom to them. But like Paul says, yeah. you've got to release the race. You've got to quit praying and ask God to do it. He's already done yeah. it. And we got to quit asking Jesus to do it and release the right, brighten up and manifest your vision because you have that vision already. My vision Amen. was was already there before these doctors operated on it. It wasn't these eyeballs right. that brought me vision. Now, yeah, if you pull your eyeballs out, but your eyeballs are like a lens that you screw into a camera. The camera has every, it can see, but it has to have that lens there. And so my right. spiritual vision has been there since I was born. And the only thing that's taken place is the fathers removing the lie, and now I can see, and now I can hear, and we all can. And so that, to me, that's a very key thing that we have to release the rays. We got to brighten ourselves up, quit condemning ourselves, and begin to manifest that vision of our understanding to the point that every time I see a person, I see a situation, I change my understanding and line up with what God says about it. And everything's right. beautiful. Now, think about this. Take a musical piece uh, of your choosing and select one single instrument to play that musical piece. Now, that could be a guitar. That could be a piano. That could be a flute, a violin. But what about when you take the same musical piece and it's played by a symphonic orchestra? Right. And they're calling these lenses s- symphony. Symphony. How much more right. beautiful the the colors and the scenery and 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 that's just a natural perspective. Yep. So when we take away the darkness, the the gloomy thoughts, we take away the. And I remember you teaching Sunday uh, and talking about how that uh, you got to be up all the time. You got to see yourself that way, think that way. It, it can't. And we have had that up one day down the next because we were operating between a heavenly mindset and an earthly mindset be, between a real, a, 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 a true and something that was religious that we've been taught. But, you know, uh, I want to mention Dr. K Fairchild because she's, she's a, a good friend of yours and has also been a wonderful uh, friend on, on this program. And she's taught on other programs with me, but she says this, and, and you wrote this uh, uh, as quoting her, we must live from the right hemisphere of the brain, which points to the mind of Christ. We must live and view things in the appearance realm from the single eye. And so I just, just dropped my thoughts in about this, that when darkness is formed by the lies and opinions of, of a natural awareness, it causes one to be unable to see 
truth clearly. And right. we have been so raised in, you know, you know, and let me just say this, I'll, I'll finish my thought. There's been a lot of cri criticism lately about saying uh, these, these comments about religion, but religion doesn't mean that everything we were raised in was 100% bad, but there was some religious elements. What I call religion is the thing that I feel like I have to do over and over and over again to be right with God. Um, the truth is uh, we, we have seen some things that actually the lens we chose to look through or that we were taught to look through caused God to be something that he was not a darker view of God than the brightness that he is. And I just lost Dr. Roy and here he's right back in here with me. Yes. Yes. Not here. And he's yep. you're sideways. Here's, you are too. Let me fix my camera, my, my thing real quick. Yes. Is that straight? Uh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, but it's not. It's not the way it was. So I don't know okay. if I can. I don't know if I can straighten that out or not. There we go. How's that? Uh, yeah. So far, so good. All right. It just went okay. away. <laughs> yeah. All okay. Right. So yeah, I mean, we have really seen, we've really been taught to use a lens and you being a, a college professor, uh, understand hermeneutics, the, the lens we look through and we see God so, so far removed from who he actually is. And it also causes us to see ourselves as something that God never made us to be. That's right. Well, it's like I always say, there's, in fact, my uh, seamstress today, she came out and was looking out in my car and there were some beads hanging down from the mirror that my somebody had sent uh, to my wife. And she immediately said, are you Catholic? And, and I told her, I said, no, I'm not. And, and so we got to talk and I began to use that thing with her where we there's all she wanted to know what what I served. And I said, well, the problem is there's all kinds of gods out there. And she said, what? And I said, yeah. well, there's a Catholic God. There's a Baptist. And she said, that's right. You know, and, and go. And, yeah. and that's what's happened. We have all of our different versions of God. But you know what? This, this spills over not into just uh, religion. It's every system of this earth that I talk about oft, oft, uh, often. There's five yeah. major systems. There's a political system, the religious system, the financial, the medical, and the social system, this earth. And so it, it affects everything. And there's a war out there trying to get us to view these systems wrong, just like politics. There's a war out there that's telling us that we're just we're getting ready to go to hell in a hand, uh, hand basket, uh, basket and America's terrible and China's terrible. I mean, look at you and me. We grew up thinking China was just horrible people, didn't we? And, uh -huh. and that and that vi that vision came from politics and other people. Exactly. And so it is a it is a tough thing. And, and so we, we, we can't say just we're doing this in religion. We're doing it in the entire world. These systems are not the kingdom of God, and we've got to learn to live out of the kingdom of God, which is righteousness and peace and joy. And where is it found? In our Holy Spirit. We'll, we're, until we get into our Holy Spirit and identify with our Holy Spirit and see with our Holy Spirit and think with our Holy Spirit, we're never going to experience righteousness. And if we don't, we'll never have any peace or joy whatsoever. And I think the path, uh, that uh, that we've rejected so often in our past that the path to truth is to first see you and Holy Spirit as one. Yes. And then you begin to see in a different mind. It's, it's a process, but it doesn't have to be a long drawn out process. And you begin to see yourself. You see, you start seeing how, well, that's how Holy Spirit thinks. And then right. you begin to think the same way you adopt the same thing that's, and you're, I say adopt, but it's not like you're adopting it brand new. It was already in you because that's who Holy Spirit is. And that's what he thinks. Right. And then we, we've got to stop exalting ourselves above other people. You know, we've got to see yes. everybody as equal. Uh, what, the, yes. what, what, what the father has given us today doesn't belong to us. Just because we write a book doesn't say it's my, it's mine. It's not mine. It's, it's from the father. And like somebody told me once, I need to be careful with what I put out there because people are going to take my, writings and steal them well i don't care <laughs> you yeah. know I'll, yeah. I'll you know i've sent you a lot and i'll i'll send everything i have if i can to people you know that i can trust right. with it not to change it but but i'm i'm just so passionate about us all becoming one and realizing we're one 
I can't wait yeah. for the voice of one to speak. I love it when I turn on Facebook and and because you can't hear it on TV much. But when I listen right. to one minister and another minister and we're all saying the same thing. And I, I, Jesus prayed that this would happen. And what Jesus prayed, Jesus gets, <laughs> you know, and we all are yeah. going to say the same thing. If you miss me, you can turn on Dr. Bill or you can turn on other, you can turn on Kay and you're going to hear the same thing. And it should be that way. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I love uh, John 13 when Jesus prays that prayer. Father, I just, I just yeah. pray that they'd be one, even as we are one. And, and think about, he says, a new commandment. And I say the, the command that supersedes all other commands. We've got the 613 Jewish laws. We've got the, the most famous 10 commandments uh, that were written on tablets of stone that are the ministry right. of death and condemnation. We've got Jesus comes and he says, I give you two new commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength and love your neighbors yourself. And then we started focusing on those and we built a really pretty big doctrine on the two. But right. we forgot the one just before he went to the cross and said, hey, here's the deal. Let's sum it all up. Love one another like I loved you, like the father loves, like you see our love relationship, love one another the same way. And I think in that you love yourself, you love those around you, you love the father, you love Holy Spirit. And you don't have a hang up, a religious hang up about, do I say I, my Holy Spirit? Do <laughs> Do I, do I say the Holy Spirit? What's yeah. the deal here? And you put all this religious condemnation garbage that really does present a separation mindset in you because it's not a separation. You ought to see what it's like for my wife to be married with me. She's always telling me, she said, you're always correcting what I say, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I said, well, you're married to me. You should know <laughs> we preach all the time, but. No, we, sh we shouldn't beat people up for how they say it. it more than right. how you say it, you just need to know that you're in union with the Father. And nothing can separate you from that whatsoever. You know, I, I love what Kathy, I always, uh, I forget her married name, and I should know, Sims. Kathy, Kathy Sims used to be Walker. But I love how she said, uh, what you believe comes after your butt. You know, and people say, <laughs> God loves you, but, you know, and uh, I told a lady today that God loves everyone. And she said, yeah, I know it, but, and then she started spewing out all that religious stuff, you know, yeah. and uh, if we could just get that down, that God loves us unconditional and it is agape love and everything else that people have been preaching is not agape, it's conditional love for years. And there are no conditions with father. You know, yeah. he just he just wants us to enjoy the life that he gave us. It's like my children. If if they don't if they're out there getting in debt all the time and getting in trouble and, you know, that's not what I we gave birth to them for. We want them to have life and life more abundantly. And that's what Jesus said. He came to reveal it to us that we mm -hmm. can have a greater life. And by the way, I, I'm sure you've seen this. But when we when the Bible talks about flesh, most of the time it's talking about the works of the flesh, which is the law. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a dead work. Then Jesus in, in Hebrews, where it talks about uh, the repentance from dead works, that's fleshly works. It's the arm of flesh. And we got to quit that. We've been trying yeah. to fix ourselves way too long. You know, uh, I, I hate to talk about my medical stuff, but uh, about three months ago, that they sent me to another psychologist because they're just convinced that I'm depressed, you know. <laughs> If I don't do some of this stuff that I, I just, but I, I met with her four times. And when we got done, she said, you don't need me. I need you. <laughs> you know, Cause I, I was just teaching her. I was at that time I was teaching living as Holy spirit. So That's I just good. shared all that with them. And she just said, you don't need to be coming here anore but can I have your book? <laughs> so yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's what, we, that's what we want. Amen. I was, Amen. I was I was trying to look this up, and I'm terrible at addresses. Where is the so-called Lord's Prayer? What verse? Matthew is that? chapter uh, Matthew chapter six, I believe it is. Is it six? Somebody might show it to you on Facebook real quick, because I want to read to you how that translates. Yes, Matthew chapter six, uh, verses nine through thirteen. Okay, let me find it. 
Okay, give me just a second because I think I think you're going to like this. I know you will because uh, John is what we were talking about earlier. That's actually the Lord's Prayer. Matthew was just Jesus teaching us how to pray. And here it is right here. And one day I just kept thinking, there, this has got to be something different than this. So I looked it up in Scripture. And 9 through 12, it says, uh, this is how we are to pray. Father, we are one and perfect rest. As you are spirit, we are spirit. Holy and pure is our nature. Your nature is apparent in us and as us. Our righteousness was caused to be from the foundation by your uh, determination, decree, and purpose by you. In that same manner from the foundation, it is eternally true of everyone. That which is daily required is supplied. Our substance are bestowed day after day. Also, you send forth our belief of needing to appease you. And in the same manner, we send forth that sense of needing of others to appease us. That's what it says. And there's no place that Jesus would say we should pray and ask God to send us bread because it's already there. Right. And yes. we don't have to ask yes. God to forgive us or anything. So that's the actual translation of that. And that's the R.E. Richmond Tree of Life Bible translation, right? Well, that's that's the word. That's the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to say it's uh, I'm not saying that my version is perfect, but I, I tell you, I believe it's very close to what it's. Uh, when I look it up in the Greek and Hebrew and I'll listen to the voice of spirit, I, I believe yes. it's very accurate. If it brings you peace, take it. If it doesn't put it on the sh put it on the shelf for another day. Well, that's what we're enjoying about the new translations that are coming out, especially from people who um, uh, believe in a similar way. It's not that everything we're saying is 100 percent accurate, but let's just say that it's more accurate than it ever has been. You take yeah. uh, uh, Francis in South Africa, who the, the mirror Bible, I mean, oh, yeah. I just saw where he's taking, as he's translating the New Testament, they're taking the book of Revelation and going to do a separate volume with just that. I saw that just today. So yeah, really powerful. I like to, um, I like to uh, throw out uh, a couple of uh, statements uh, that you've made um, in whatever remaining time that we have. We're at the top of the hour just about. Uh, you said our Holy Spirit is bringing about a great, quickening in people all through this planet. And I know we've already touched on that tonight, but uh, how is that happening? Is it just through teachers? No, it's for everybody. I, I believe I believe one thing, I believe uh, more and more people are coming to the end of what they believed. I believe they're beginning to see that it hasn't brought much health, help in the earth. It's like Paul Young's book on the shack. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. Mac was talking to, to Papa and Mac was asking her about judgment and everything else. And she just said, how's that working for you? You know, and I believe the spirit of God has been speaking that to people. How's this working for you? And we're beginning to question things. We were taught before not to question our pastors and our denomination. Right. So I believe, first of all, people are getting dissatisfied. And they need yeah. something. They stay, They love God. They don't want to turn their back on the church. Uh, it's just like what Kay wrote the other day about Christianity. You know, I, I, I've been saying a lot for a long time that I'm not a Christian. I'm a believer, but I'm still a Christian. But I'm I'm not the way the Christianity is in the world today. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe that there is a uh, the awakenings taking place because people are beginning to realize that there's more. And when you get to the point you realize there's more, then you can hear more. And uh, they're beginning to listen to that the amen inside of them. I always tell people, when you listen to me teach, listen for the amen in your spirit. Don't listen to it in your brain and your conscious awareness, you know, uh, because sometimes your conscious awareness is filled with a lot of wrong stuff. But you're going to hear the spirit inside of you say amen. And I've heard a lot of people say that. You know, the Apostle Paul, uh, desired so much for there be, to be an opening for the word so that he could speak the word. But the, the hindrance to that is just, you know, our religious belief system. So, and then also I see, you know, you yourself, look how many people are all over the world on Facebook that uh, I used to have a lot of people fight me on Facebook. I mean, vicious words. I told you about the one guy that wanted to have me stoned if he could. 
but on <laughs> my but I, there's I, there's five thousand people on my Facebook page. I'm not bragging about it. They don't all follow me, but they're on there. But I don't have anybody attack me anymore. I don't have. It's nothing right. like it was five or six years ago. And I think Kay's pretty much that way too, and hopefully you are too. But there's so many this this millennial generations coming like wildfire. And uh, yeah. I just believe we're in, and there's been many days of awakening, but this to me, I think it's, it's a, a, it's a more a pure awakening because we're all focused on the same thing. And, and I want to yeah. emphasize this. We must quit attacking the church. I've seen some yeah. pretty vile things come out of people's mouths that, that are hearing truth, but they're mad at the church. Well, if you're going to do that, get mad at yourself because you were there, <laughs> you know, you were involved in it. But I'm not mad yeah. at anybody. I, and I love all of them. And I care wherever you're at, whatever level, whether you're in outer court, holy place, most holy place, whether you're a, a, a little child or son or a father, we're all the same, you know, and we're all growing at different rates. But I do believe that it's happening very quickly. And I don't believe people right. are going to stay in outer court very long anymore. I believe the key, the key thing is to get out of that teaching, though, and come on up hither. You know, Dr. Roy, 37, 37 years ago, I'd already been preaching for about 10 years. And uh, because of, of things that I wouldn't call real great revelation today, but at that time was really uh, uh, such great revelation to me. Uh, I actually, my wife and I were excommunicated, I'll say, from our, our first uh, denomination we were in. And during the course of transition for me, you know, I was praying one time. And I was reminding God. We was always taught, remind God of his word. And I was reminding God of his word. And I heard Holy Spirit say this. I heard him say, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, was, I was telling him what he said. And he said, I didn't say that. So nope. you're right. It's not just a matter of that, you know, we, we get all this book learning and we're, we're because as we've talked about, even the even the strong concordance uh, came out in 1890, I think it was, and 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 so far removed from the original Greek. We we really have to have Holy Spirit speak to us, rise up in us, and say, "Here's what this is really saying." And to do that, we come up with some really wild things sometimes. But what's happened in so many lives, as well as myself, is there came a time where I was so frustrated because what I had been believing and preaching and feeding on was no longer satisfying me. And I knew I was, I knew I was full of the, the spirit of God. I was full of the father. I believed the fullness of God lived in me. And I was so frustrated that I just said, you know what? There's got to be more than this. And I began yes. to pursue that. Yeah. And the fir first step that usually happens is people get mad. When, when they begin to hear stuff and I've, I've had people write me and everything and they say, you mean everything I was taught's not true. And uh, I'll say, well, it was true for you at that point. You know, it was true at your level, but right. mo most of it wasn't true and don't get mad. Just kind of find the truth and then get glad if I can, if I can <laughs> say it that way, because once you hear the truth and you don't worry about the, the, what we call the lie or the, the misunderstanding or whatever. You just, you made your own the truth. You know, I grew up with that way. A lot of stuff taught to me that God did not say, you know, so like, like I've, I've taught so far, we, we need to know how to stay centered in our Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Father God is the center of all things, the center of the universe, but the very center of our being. And so I had to practice staying centered, not let myself get pulled out. I mean, this disease that they say that I have and and this weakness that I've had for so long, it's, it has been a battle. And I have to daily make myself stay centered on where I'm at, because if not, you yeah. know, you can get that's all you're talking about. And then uh, understand what the single eye is. And then I taught a whole ser uh, chapter on the prisoner of wisdom, you know, over and over and over. Solomon and the, 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 the Psalms, the Proverbs talks about seeking wisdom and calls it a her. And, and, and wisdom mm -hmm. is, is the mind of God. Wisdom is our Holy Spirit. And then what is our manna today? And our manna is feeding out of our Holy Spirit. That's 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 where we're at today. And just stay there. Yeah. I don't need to go hear a word about what God thinks about me. I don't need a word of knowledge. If you do, that's fine. I don't need to be slain anymore. I don't I don't need any of that because I know who I am. And until you yeah. do, you know, until you do, that's okay. But there's gonna come a time you're gonna say, wait a minute. 
You know, I think I can find, I can, I can talk to God myself and find out who I am. And he's yes, going to say, you're, you're me, you're me in a body. Yeah. Because I remember when we were the ones given the words and telling people, uh, uh, these uh, personal prophecies of what they were all about and what God was doing. And, you know, I don't have to rain on somebody's parade, but you know what? Uh, you don't have to tell me how much I'm loved you don't have to tell me how, how, how much I look like my daddy <laughs> because right. I already know that. Um, some people, some people need to know, hear that though. They do need <laughs> yeah. to, but here's the thing. If you're, if you're a minister or a pastor of a church, or you're in any kind of ministry, Realize that you need to taper them off of that and bring them up higher. That, that's our problem. We've kept people too much dependent on us. And my goal is to bring you where you don't need me anymore. I can't wait till you turn around, not talking about you, brother, but the people you turn around and you teach me. You, you take what we've given you and then you begin to discover more truth and share it with us. So uh, they're not our people. They belong to Father. And we just happen to be a messenger that's brought into their life. We're a star like Esther that's causing people to look up. A uh, wonderful segue into the next quote uh, that you have made that I that caught my attention. Um, uh, it says, uh, we currently possess a greater understanding of higher truth, no matter how unpopular it may be. We are, as Paul was, duty bound to unfold the undeceitful truth that will make all people free to live their true life all right and you've got to do that with a single eye yes you do and the higher the higher truth is you know it's what father said from the foundation of the world we had to always go right back to there that we are the image of god and we never lost it whatsoever and made free i i really uh, pound on this a lot because i even hear uh, uh modern movies and stuff say jesus uh, came to set us free. I mean, that, that the truth will set you free, but Jesus set us free with what he taught. And if we would have been, if we would have listened to what he taught and been able to hear what he taught, we would have been made free a long time ago and made free of the experience of it. So when you hear, when you hear the truth, the, the undeceitful word, then it makes you free to the point that you experience it. And that's what everybody wants. They want to experience it. And they want they want the manifestation, but the truth is, is we are the manifestation. We already are. And I, I've had many people say, "Well, when is all this going to manifest?" Well, it is now. It's the the Bible says that the glory of the world, uh, glory of the Lord, has filled this whole earth. It's covered the earth as the waters have covered the sea, and that's us, and that's the creation. It's all now already. And your 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 very thought of wondering when it's going to happen, it's anti. Holy Spirit, your life, or what we say, Antichrist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's the uh, higher truth. And, and what, a scripture that I love about that, that maybe will be the, 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 the climax for tonight, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18. Uh, there's so many better translations than the New King James uh, or the King James, but it says, while we do not look at things which are seen, and we know that we translated that as, perceived by the senses in the past, uh, but look at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are seen are eternal. Uh, I, think the, I think the Passion Translation says are from the unseen realm. And, and so even everything we perceive with the natural mind, and we're trying to uh, see through a carnal perspective. We're trying to interpret God or our relationship with God or this great disconnect of this separation anxiety mindset. We have to understand that that's that everything in life is a temporary status. Everything is subject to change except the things that are eternally true. And we come to know the eternal truth uh, because we live in the eternal one. We're a part of the eternal one. We were created as immortal spirit beings and I know that people have a problem with that, Dr. Roy. But the fact is, as long as, as like Dr. Case, as long as we keep living out of the awareness realm and everything's about the senses, everything's about, um, you know, what I can touch and see. And it helps me to understand and interpret uh, instead of saying, you know what, there's got to be a greater truth. So Holy Spirit will say, you know, when you're praying, like with me, like I didn't say that uh, right. you start hearing 
out of that realm. You start hearing, and and uh, you know what I'm saying. It's on out of the inside. It's not right. out of in another realm. It's out of you, and it just well, our, changes you. Our problem was is we we prayed the way we thought prayer was, asking God to do something. Uh, when li literally the word prayer or pray means converse to converse. So if we yes. would have been conversing with our father, we would have heard the true way to pray and uh, the true way to speak. But we were just repeating what we learned from religion, you know, and I joke about this all the time when people have a hard time with all that. I just say, it's OK if they want to be wrong. It's OK. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Most of the time they laugh with me. <laughs> But yeah, it is hard. It's it's very difficult. I mean, I'm 69 years old. Uh, I met Brother Garner in 1996 when I was uh, what would that be? 46, 1996. Couple I was of days born ago. In 50. Yeah, 46. And and uh, just what he taught was hard for us, you know. And the the, uh, the the we the way we prayed didn't fit it anymore. Or whatever, it was very hard. Yeah. And me me as a teacher and a and a writer and a scribe. It's very difficult, not as much now, but it's very difficult for my wife because, man, she was a prayer warrior. You know, she knew how to yeah. fight. And, and I appreciate all the prayer warriors. But uh, yeah. to learn that every, the way she prayed and have to undo all of that. And now what we do is we say we speak the word. That's prayer. We just speak the word yeah. over that situation. And, and I and when I minister over you, I tell you, I see you as God sees you. I see you as whole. And that's what I've asked people to do for me. Instead of praying, asking God to heal me, see me as whole. See, see exactly. me, see the, the, the God, my health, our, our health flooding over in me. And that's the way I, I, right. I minister to people today. And that's, you know, and so if somebody says it's hard for me, I just say, it's okay. Put it on the shelf and take what you can take now. And I've said this before yeah. you before, and I want to say it to new people, but there's one food that I don't like at all, and that's called hominy. I consider that uh, my mom and dad were very poor, and we ate hominy, and I consider that to be poor people's food. And so Walmart, oh sell, Walmart sells hominy, but you know what? I just don't go to that aisle. I go get what I can get. So that's what I tell people. Take what you can get, uh, feed on that, and, and your spirit will just enlarge that more and more, and then greater understanding will come. And again, you we're know, not saying we know everything, but we know a whole exactly. lot. <laughs> you, you know, this uh, preacher friend of mine uh, said that they were raised uh, back in the day on uh, on spaghetti and said they called spaghetti poor men's food. And I said, oh, man, I you know spaghetti. what you're talking about. Spaghetti is a <laughs> delicacy. Yes, uh, it is. But, you know, back in the Depression, the poor man's food actually was chicken and dumplings. Really? Uh, according to history. Yeah. Yeah. And red so, beans. That was poor people food. I love red beans and meatballs. Oh, Most yeah. People put ha rich people put ham in it. Hey, and I love hominy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. No more. No more fellowship yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. No. Just fellowship. Well, Dr. Roy, you know, um, I, my, if I could go back, you, you and I have talked about this. If I could go back, if you could go back and rewrite all of our books, I've only got two books out and the third one hopefully coming out. Um, my first book was written when I was pastoring at the age of 20, uh, but didn't get published till years later. And so I've already done a rewrite. My second book, uh, even that I'd like to redo, but it has 60 quotes in it. And one quote in particular, you've already mentioned the definition is about prayer. And it says prayer is simply communication between two people in love. Yes. Now I'm not trying to make that statement. When I wrote that, when I said that I didn't have the understanding that there is no separation. It's not two people facing each other, but out of that understanding of face of, of, of staring into his face of, of gleaning from the glory that I was looking into, that was a real revelation to me then. And now I understand that what's going on in my spirit, man, is flooding over into my soulish man, the realm of where I don't understand. That's flooding over into what happens in my body. And I believe that if you were not here, there's not too many people around preaching your message. You have to be here. I have to be here. Uh, we got to keep preaching this thing. And as you said, uh, I fully agree that people are going to get this. They're getting it oh, yeah. all Definitely. over the world. Well, you know, we, I, I don't want to be graphic here, but, you know, we used to hear the most intimate relationship was a face-to-face -face relationship. 
Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. It's actually the most intimate relationship is inside of each other. Exactly. And that's what God we're in. God's inside of us and we're inside of God. And, there, and we we should never we never can come out of that. But in our mindset, we do. We you know, we we have this great prayer meeting and we go to church and it's wonderful. And then we go back to the world and get back into that carnal minded stuff. And we got to quit doing that. That's what I said last week. Who said there is no coming down? We are in the cool of the day right now. And exactly. remember, the cool of the day is Ruach. That whole phrase is Ruach. And it means spirit. We live in spirit. So we can't come down, but we come down right here because we're yeah. so concerned with the cares of the world and the cares of the politics and religion and everything. And we just need to quit and let the let Holy Spirit be our guiding light every day. Yeah. And, and what we hear, what we see, what we say, as John Cahill said years ago, and I pray it often. And now I say, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you put a guard over my ear, what I hear. Yes. You put a guard over my eyes, what I see. And you put a guard over my mouth, what I say. And, and Father, Father has answered that conversation with me. And I'll, I'll love it. Amen. Amen. Face to face, literally face into face. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, oh, my goodness. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface hardly of this subject. And I know you're teaching about this. Uh, everybody tune in uh, Central Standard Time. What do you go live about? Uh, 10, 11 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, Central Standard Time. Dr. Roy is currently teaching on this very thing. And um, uh, Wisdom of the Single Eye. Uh, I think that will come out in a book eventually. Yep. I'm, I'm probably going to do five to seven more chapters. I'm on my fifth chapter right now. And once I get it done, I'll get it edited again and then uh, send it to Len Garner and get it published. There you go. There you go. Dr. Roy, thank you so much for being on with me. We got to do this again. All right. I love you very yeah. much. I love everybody. Thank you guys for coming and watching us. Listen to Amen. us. Amen. We, we appreciate everybody. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please click like and then click share so that others can be blessed by this powerful lesson tonight. And we'll see you in the morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on Friday Morning Conversations. And uh, Pastor Mark Zenker from Canada is going to be on with me. We're continuing our series and we will see you then. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.